and it's my password. One more. Mm -hmm. um, Ben's spoken to John and she's coming. So, so Elaine. Hello. Oh, <laughs> Michael's here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good evening. I'm welcome Michael Marks. Yeah. I say mask, I mean mask. Oh, it's mask. See, it's mask. It's not mask, it's mask. Um, yeah. I'm on the same front. Oh, It's interesting. Um, as to the result <laughs> Well, it's their actual college degree. There's a Supreme Court or not. Is it sort of simple like ours or is it a little more complicated? It's a little more complicated. Well, it's, well it's, it is and it isn't. So it's primarily designed to be exactly what it would have been. It's designed 1700s in my time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you didn't have the ability to vote quickly and, and elections took weeks and weeks and weeks to vote and all this other stuff. Um, and it is designed as well to kind of balance the power of the in a large state because it's a small state. And you get the idea of having electoral college voters, uh, you know, voters who go and vote for the president and then their individual states vote for them. Um, but it, it is not system because it isn't a directly elected position. You're voting for your electoral college member who will vote in the college who then determines the president. And it's not even as easy as that because if you win a state, say, Bonsoir has 12 um, votes in the electoral college, most of that is in the state, you will get hurt. For the some they do that. Some proportion and others break it that permanently, but if you win a county, you get one vote. Oh, yeah. right. So you three split 13 7 or something. There's a few different ways of delivering a question. Mm -hmm. there's, there's also an, an, an interesting topic of art, which is called the uh, it's like an interstate voting pact. And basically, it's to, an idea to storm the electoral college and beat itself. So you end up with the direct, the electoral, of the, the entity in direct action. Because they will just turn around and uh, they'll, they'll do it on whoever states. When they hit the line and they're choosing their candidate, they will just all say, well, give all our votes to that candidate. And every state should be the same. So, in effect, by default, you end up just Second, then you get the silly situation where people like Hillary Clinton, they just dump and got the most popular yeah, votes in the electoral college. Yeah. Anyway, that's we are, we are, everybody here is, is accounted for. So we are ready to go, I think. Harry, so, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, you can hear you, but we can hear you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Right, should we start then? Yeah. As it's 1904. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Finance Commission of the 21st Court of Federal Frequency. So, emergency evacuation procedures, I think everyone in the room is familiar with the emergency evacuation procedure, and we need to put it here, so we can do that one. Obviously, filming a recording um, in mind of every speaker. 
in the bottom of the list, 2014, this new meeting, what will be filmed and recorded by Town Council and the public. Um, Town Council aren't building it, but it might be on the again soon. So, item one is submissions from the public, and we don't appear to have any submissions from the public, as there are no public present. But do councils have anything you want to say, potentially? Okay, no, I take that as a no submission from the public. Item one, so we'll move item two. Which is to receive apologies for absence. And I understand from the clerk, we already have absence apologies from Ed Rose, Franklin, and Elaine. Yeah. And nobody else. So, is there anybody else to chip in? For anybody who may not be here? That's everybody at council. No. Okay. Sorry, this is in the moment. Oh, what well, is it since you're in the agenda at any meeting? Monday. Well, oh, let's do you for the minute, then, Jack. That's good. <laughs> Um, declarations of members of the local government act at 1972, item 3, do you have any? Uh, nobody's got the hand up on Zoom, no one's got the hand up on Zoom. Item 4 is an answer for the chair. Um, I don't really have any announcements, but I just want to say no, thank you for attending today and attending by Zoom, understanding all the pressures and problems that COVID is giving everybody in their personal lives. It is an inconvenience to us all. Um, but you know, thank you for being here and taking part. And so, welcome back to it. Oh, yeah, and sorry, a welcome back from Reddit. So, so we've done our introductions, haven't we? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, but yeah, the most important thing, the most important thing, is to welcome back Rachel, who has uh, returned to work after the period of absence, and we're all very happy to see her. So item five is confirmed that it's the meeting held on the 19th of August 2020 as a correct record. Um, I've seen everyone try to be minutes in their own time at home. We have a proposal for minutes. Tony and Michael second in. Um, all those in favour for minutes. I'm in favour, but I don't I can't work out how to put the uh, hand up. Okay, right, that's one, two, Michael, yes, you are three, four, five in favour. Against. The above reaction to the bottom of your screen, Terry. Yeah, all reactions, yeah, sorry. That's it. Good job, chose that one. So it's five in favour. Abstentions? And mm -hmm. well, then next. Thank you very much. Can you wrap me up the page and sign the date the last of May? I've got a blue pen. That's fine. I don't mind my blue pen because it's a black one. I've got a black one. No, it's all right. I'll just, I'll just use it to save time, save time. Um, I've just read the date on the blue pen. It's a bit of a Actually, meant to make from here and when Rachel joins to say something in the chair's announcements. I just missed the way through it. And there's no announcements to make. This is already been put into Rachel's third, yeah. <laughs> Nothing out of the ordinary here. <laughs> Arising from the meetings in Parliament in August 2012, I'll start with the candidate. There's nothing in the agenda pack, nothing in the agenda pack, shall Skip over that one. Item 7, still so matters in correspondence, referring to the weather in the state of the Climate Committee. I don't think we've got any. No. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Item 8 is still on the top of the list. Well, you have to bear with me if you ask questions because I can't hear, hear people very well. Um, do, you want, do you want me to go through it or just give them a, a summary because I can't 
pages for the, the current eight and the expenditure? Well, I'm happy to do what every full company can do. So if you want to go through it, go through it. If you want to give a summary, give a summary. Um, okay. um, I did make a few notes. So rather than sort of going through everything in detail, because things do change as the year goes on. Um, so a quick summary of pages one and two, which is the current income and expenditure um, situation is that yeah we're on target for the income um, even slightly above uh, the, the budget but we did make adjustments in june 2020 uh, specifically when the hiring comes from the site uh, was reduced by uh, 83 mid to say so basically three and a half thousand uh, due to the closures and cancellation um, but at the same time um, we're on track with that. Um, I think that was that, that was uh, the best move that we could have made, and the figures seem, seem to be realistic. Um, the expenditure appears to be stable uh, stable across all sectors um, at forty six point three uh, forty six point three percent at the moment. So I think the changes that we made in June um, really paid off. Um, so that we could feed that into into the forward plan um, sort of going forward. I did a full review um, after coming back. I, I, I went through sort of all the accounts and everything and all the all the minutes um, since I was out, um, get, getting everything up to date. Um, and going through the accounts, um, I've got quite a few budget changes. Um, to, to be made uh, for the, the current financial year. So they're itemised on page three and four. Um, this is directly linked to the income and expenditure schedule. So um, how how I actually sort of came about sort of, um, determining which budget needed to be changed. It was literally going with the budgets that we had initially after June 20, having a look at the performance of stage um, for both the income and expenditures, and you have got an income and against expenditure schedule um, linked in with this report. Um, so any budget that I the our mentions in this report have been highlighted in pink in, in that income against it and it show report. Um, I can go through those sort of one by one if you want, or, or are you happy to, as members of the public can't to go through um, sort of page by page? I just ask about the, um, the computer support. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Two weeks and then I'll see you one go. That's fine. I just would just want to open make out what they see then. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, with the about the computer support. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. But whilst I was out, um so I, I, I did get involved in gym, um because obviously when when I was first out, um the pandemic wasn't around. So um I, I did work on uh, sort of budgets and things back in June, uh, but I didn't have the um, the time to actually, or, or probably the ability to actually go through and individually look at all the entries as they're going through how they were allocated within our account. So part of getting to where we are today, I have moved around quite a, a lot of money that had been um, allocated to budget that I wouldn't I wouldn't apply them to. Um, now, the uh, computer support was one of them, 
and at the same time the budget had to go up because we have had home working and uh, things like that going on so um, it did impact rather yeah okay you know so, so I, I wouldn't have reduced it if, if everything had been allocated as, as, as it, it should um it, it would have actually sort of read um completely differently and i didn't have reduced that budget at that time so basically it's reversing what was done um back in june um and adding a little bit more to allow for the home working yeah yeah okay that's lovely thank you um the, and the street maintenance um and then that gone up by 7,000, and it says that with a reverse June reduction following new agreed contract and new developing enhancement. Yes, um, there was a new contract um, agreed, and it wasn't until I could actually go through and read all the, the minutes and everything that um, I saw that a, a, co a new contract had been agreed that had gone up um, uh, by a fair amount. And at the same time, um, council had agreed that was coming through last year, but it, it hadn't sort of hit at that point before I was out. Uh, for the roundabout enhancement, that is an additional two and a half thousand a year. So um, the, the budget, and it was agreed with council before I was out that the budget would stay at the level that they were before I was out, and then as soon as I was back, it, it would be looked at again. And really, thought that this is putting everything back into the position that it should be. So basically, the increase is, you know, two and a half thousand of it is the roundabout enhancement that weren't in the original budget. It was in, I think that was some strategic planning. Um, so it was in the pipeline that council had not agreed to it at the time. And we did have a new street maintenance contract that I noticed was agreed that did increase amount as well. Okay, thank you. And do, do, you, do you know who that contract is with? Um, it's the Dalian Signature. Yeah, that's the yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. 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 What was talking about is that we had spent two and a half thousand on two roundabout, which obviously the contract that we put in place um, was a ridiculous contract because there was no allowance for actually walk through, um, hence that's why it's been put a mess. Um, but I just point, what's, what's the rest of the money for? Again, it was not like our way verges on tracks. We've got street maintenance. Mm -hmm. Right, so why are we increasing that budget? Uh, I, I understand what you're not saying, but I don't know what you mean by no, it, 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 It's a combination. It's the 2,500. It's an increase from the ambient contract uh, that, that was agreed whilst I was out as well. And again, due to um, items being applied to a, a different nominal code, when I actually went in and moved items back, it had thrown expenditure levels out and adjusted things. So we did actually slash the budget uh, from round about 18,000 uh, 18, in June, um, and it, so it's purely reversing it. Again, it's just where entries have been put to different nominal codes. My, my question is, what are ambient landscaping doing for this extra money? They're not doing the job right now. You know, they're not cutting the edges, they're not doing any dip ripping, and they're leaving them on their grass cutting. Is that... So why are we... Why, 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 why are we... 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 I, I think what you're all saying is, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to agree on the spiel what you're saying, but isn't that a different mandatory, different um, time? Because the, all we're doing with the budget is moving the money around to the board, which we can see. So the moment accidents that and some others have, have gone up, and, been, and things have been charged the wrong way for it to work. So quite rightly, right, rightly so, the, the, the mechanism of us saying, 
then we landed 2018, and we thought we'd agree previously in other communities, and the boy just did well at the start of the So shouldn't we take that as a discussion point to something like full council? Okay. So we could do as far as the quality of the work is concerned. That work there is um, a fixed three year contract. Yeah. yeah. It's what it, what Rick would say, it we're not increasing the amount of money we're giving out the it's, it's just the friends of the budgets are, are, are being readjusted to no, reflect no, no, no. Because yeah. they've got their fixed contract, which was agreed up uh, in April. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but that, that has to be accounted for in the original budget. Absolutely. I, I, I think I, I like your concerns. Um, but I don't think we need to see. So, I think this needs to be the trigger for a conversation to say that we have to do that at full council, because that. But then say in the totality of that cost, as a councillor, you will have to service being provided for that eighteen thousand. For that eighteen thousand to meet our current legal obligations essentially, we've got to move the money around to you, say it's there. Yeah. The legal obligation to So we're not increasing the money, we're just consolidating the budget. So if anything, I think what Rachel's done for us is clearly brought out how much we're spending there, which then enables you to have a point of view as you've got, yeah. and a conservative. So I think yeah. for a full council mm -hmm. session, this would be ambient landscapes and certain by the five percent. And it was actually, I think, if you could read the, the um, I read the information on the 5040, the ambient contract was actually 12,220, is that right, Rachel? 5040? Yeah, that's the primary book. This is going to make people laugh. I've got a lot of eyesight. <laughs> where my eyesight has been affected a little bit. They say it's temporarily, but we'll see. Um, it's on page six. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm five zero four zero. Um, I'm, 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 yeah, uh, yeah. Do you re we reduced the budget down from eighteen thousand seven hundred and forty six. To 11,000, and that was based on uh, the year end figures from the last audit and also the figures that were shown in stage at that time, um, our accounting system. But I, I wasn't in a position to go through with a fine tooth comb and look at it. Um, then, um, where are we? Yeah, so uh, the roundabout um, maintenance, 2,500 hadn't been. Um, allowed for um, uh, ambient contract with Creek Airport. Yes, uh, twelve thousand two hundred and twenty was agreed by chairs in in March twenty. Um, because their previous three year fixed rate contract had ended, so that was agreed by chairs uh, during lockdown. When um, um, so I'm guessing it, that was done by emails because it had to be renewed. It was done through the um, coronavirus action plan delegated to so, help. We had agreed a contract for three years in that action plan. Hello. What do you mean? That was one of the ones that went to. I know I wasn't chair then. Is that yeah. No, I've yeah. already seen that. I'm just a bit surprised that we've signed it. But I, I don't think it was a massive um, increase. I, I think the problem is, Tony, that walking it um, a bit, I, I, other than your sort of views on what we're actually getting for our money from that uh, um, supplier, was that back in June, we moved the budget down because we were just trying to flash everything that we could, not knowing how bad we, you know, we would be impacted. That was one that was shaved back and it shouldn't have been. There were a couple. So this is just restoring it to where it should have been. We were actually during the COVID period went out and checked if they actually had cut the grass. I wouldn't know. No. I think that's I think that's what we prior to council. If you're concerned about the service provision from the supplier. We asked for some kind of report or something on the service provision. 
But and I think you're right, I mean, when we're just being promoted there, but no, it's... I think the point has to be made, Chair, that if we just pull the plug off this particular contract without anybody coming in behind to do it, it's going to be, the area is going to look quite a mess for the weeks it's going to take in the contract in place. Well, yeah, and that's not going to get close, just keep that there screen there. Okay, well, are we all right to move on from that one now? We can take that in a discussion for a better forum for that one. Yeah. And does anyone else have any questions for Rachel regarding what she's already discussed on pages yes, two, three, and four? It's another one on page six, the cleaning contract. Um, that, we're coming on to that separately, but this is just budget changes for now, just on pages three and four. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's for the current year. Um, what you're talking about for the cleaning contract, that's just highlighting something that council needs to bear in mind when setting the future budget, because we've got no information on that yet. I'm just highlighting areas that may impact in the future. Rachel, to be actually on the summary, um, the, the sum of the old budget, the budget, be the sum of the new budget, the change we're making, what that, actually, uh, what that is in total? The total total? Um, no, just, just the change we're making on pages three and four. Well, mm -hmm. income you'd have to take out because the first total, 4009, that's just training income, that was just the small one where we know that we are going to have some um, initial stuff. So I'd also then have to take out reserve. So just bear with me. But we are wrapping budget a bit, so uh, we we have to take out strategic plan um, sorry, um, reserve, and we also have to take out the uh, the income just to get down to uh, the the basic expenditure budget. So we're wrapping from two hundred eighteen thousand nine hundred and six to two hundred thirty one two two five. That was me adding it up very, very quickly, though. So, so what was it? Sorry, from two hundred and eighteen thousand. Sorry, sorry, Rachel, you're breaking up there. Two one eight. Two one eight nine eight six. Nine eight six. Thank you. To two three one two two five. Two two five. Thank you. Which is the net list of twelve thousand three hundred nineteen pounds. Well, Thank you. Um, well, I would like to point out that a lot more than that was flashed in June when we went through everything. But well, I think we did go through the five two ten. Two one eight two three one is oh, that is twelve thousand. Yeah. Oh, it was three three one. Didn't you say? No, two one eight nine zero six. Yeah. So two three one two two five. I got on the screen. I think they're they're all here. Yeah. I, I heard that today with your audio to cut out when Rachel was saying it makes it sound like 300 or 4,000. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's a net lift of 12,319 pounds. Okay, thank you. So are we being asked to make a decision then basically on um, those budget considerations and adjustments to do? Yeah, I mean, they are realistic figures based on um, the how the accounts should have been showing our expenditures. The other thing is that um, these budget changes have already been incorporated within the five-year forward plan and the income and expenditure schedule that went out with this report. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank
that I mean that's how I I picked all these up. We don't normally have this money, but I mean it's exceptional circumstances for more than one reason. Does anybody else any further comments before moving on? I mean, all, all I would say is see our budget. So we don't just spend it because it's there. You know, it has to be linked to the contract or authorised. So are we, are we going to vote the amendments to the budgets and say we change the budget? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to propose we amend the budget as, as tabled, basically. Does anyone second that? Yeah, let me move this third. Yeah, second. Second by Tony. I'm happy. So all those in favour of adopting what Rachel's provided in PAC? That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to go through pages five and six yeah. and seven? <laughs> so I need to pick it up. <laughs> um, right. So basically, um, so that's the snapshot of where we are now. This is all part of the mid-year review. Uh, so um, now moving on to other things that are outstanding um, or things for consideration. So. We have got quite a few things going on with strategic planning that have been discussed. Nothing's been approved, but um, in the main book, some things have been um, uh, discussed. So um, the state park development, um, the uh, interiors of the containers, uh, 12,000 maximum budget has been provisionally set aside, approved by council, but that's again is pending quote and that will be council's decision. Um, but that that will be coming out of the youth reserve, um, number code 3079, so um, that doesn't impact on things that are going forward. Uh, Bailey's Court Activity Centre, um, there was talk about uh, replacing the damaged grass um, and improving the grounds in the preschool uh, play area, um, putting in artificial grass. Uh, artificial grass. Um, there's currently 17,000 remaining in the ground maintenance budget. So yes, we have to sort of take the monthly contract and a few other bits and pieces. Um, and I was speaking to Dell, and um, she let me know that uh, there are some possible sort of hefty holes maintenance. Um, bills coming, um, but that 17,000 should be enough to, to sort of cover all those areas. Uh, Bailey's Court Bay area, um, just refreshing that, at the last meeting that budget was um, provisionally increased from 75,000 to 105 with the final decision um, whether that goes ahead or not uh, to be taken uh, once we know what the financial position is at, at year end. Uh, we have got 75,000 to buy for that. That was um, arranged in, in June. Um, and there, are, there is um, possible external funding available um, if we can secure some of that. So um, we're in a fairly good position there. It, it's just if we go above that 75,000 at the moment and we don't secure external funding for the difference, we would have to work um, over the following year to, to repay that money back so that we're in a strong position to support the other pay areas um, as, as they'll need sort of replacing it various times in the future. Uh, the installation and replacement of the bus shelters, that's been put on hold for the foreseeable future. But I thought I would to highlight that within reserve, Council had put 18,000 by. Um, in previous uh, periods, and that was primarily to replace bus shelters. So you could, while we're going into the next budget run, you could consider reducing that if you, um, or maintaining it. I'm just highlighting that that's an area that um, you, uh, you could consider. Um, installation of the solar panels, um, we're working off sort of really early figures at the moment. Um, and um, uh, we're looking at around about 25,000 for each site for that to go ahead. 
Uh, we haven't got money in reserve for in the budget for that at the moment. As we've got 5,000 in our um, green reserve. Um, so if council did want to follow that through, um, we'd, ha we'd have to plan where that money sort of comes from. Uh, replacement of the roof at uh, Bailey's Court, again, that, that's at early stages. Um, at the time that I wrote this report, we were looking at in the region of 64,000 and at the last meeting, um, council said that they'd be interested in uh, putting in solar, ta uh, solar panels uh, within the tiling of any new roof. Uh, Dell today said that if it was a whole roof, then the actual um, quote would be a lot higher, but it's not something that, that's urgent at the moment. And again, council have just asked the quotes to be sought. Um, but if we do need to go ahead with that, then I think that's, again, something that we have to plan for over a number of years and put some money into the, for the future. Um, then the other item for consideration, um, ignore the next one because that's the duplication of the state part. So I'm not getting this money twice. Um, the next one is um, the Brookway development. So um, it's increasing the building and storage. And at the last council meeting, um, it was mentioned for us to have a look at possibilities of loans. For this, I'm guessing because we, um, our office loan is coming to an end in um, next year. So I have been in contact with the Ministry of Housing and Communities and local government because we have to get permission to borrow from them before we can even approach anyone to, to borrow money. And if we did, we almost certainly would go to the Public Works Loan Board because they do the best rates for the public sector. Um, Basically, uh, they have said you can apply for a loan, but you have to meet certain criteria. Um, uh, affordability, obviously, being a major one, but also um, going out for a public consultation. We had to do this when we um, took out the loan for the office. Um, so it's not something that's going to happen straight away, and, and um, you know there are costs attached to that. Um, and we would actually have to sort of work out costings against this and, you know, whether it's feasible and get the sort of public to uh, approve it prior to council approving it before we can even apply for a loan. So that's just, in the first instance, before you do anything, you have to get a loan agreement before actually being able to apply for a loan. Um, so... That, that's an interesting thing. Uh, what they did say, though, because I thought, you know, if council have, were looking at solar panels and this, that, and the other, and you were going to go for a loan, um, you could do one loan for sort of more than one item, or you could do a few items and go for individual loans for each of them. Um, but again, everything would have to go up for public consultation. Um, the cleaning contract, um, Tony, uh, Del just mentioned it, especially with COVID going on. I'm just highlighting it that, um, you know, that additional cleaning going forward might be needed or additional costs. Um, I'm just highlighting that, that, you know, that might be a situation that, that may arise. Um, who knows how COVID is going to progress and um, whether our current contractors are up to the task, especially, you know, for having a public building with multiple groups going in and out. Um, the next item uh, for consideration, uh, vehicle replacement. Uh, we've got 13,000 in reserve at the moment. This is for the flatbed, uh, because apparently that is coming towards the end of its life, from the information that I've been told. So it's whether we go ahead and replace it with a new bill, uh, sorry, with a, with a new vehicle, or whether um, council choose to lease one. Um, and then uh, Jubilee Centre uh, Kitchen. Again, this was 
looked at earlier and put on the hold, obviously, for the due to expenditures. Um, so, quotes were received, or rough estimates were received in May uh, in the region of, of 3.7 and 3.3 um, for the Jubilee uh, Centre main kitchen and the Woodland Street kitchen. We have got 13,000 in the maintenance budget at the moment. Um, so, if council did want to go ahead with that one, that might be worth considering later on towards the end of this financial year if you've got sufficient money left. Um, so, all those are just items to, you know, sort of that I'm going to try and bear in mind as we're going through setting the budget for next year because things are going to be tight. Um, so, Looking ahead, based on where we are at the moment, the five-year forward plan, um, the, the basic foundations of next year's budget are already in place. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll play around with or sort of reduce figures or amend them as much as we can sort of moving forward. Um, the current projection is showing uh, 45.7 thousand year-end surplus at the end of this year um, that will roll into next year. Now, that is assuming that all budgets are spent, which generally we, we don't. We have slashed budgets already, so we might have less reserves than normal. Mm -hmm. uh, because we, even though we're not getting income in, the, our running costs are, are, are continuing. Um, and the the forward plan that went out with this report uh, does apply a 0.5% precept increase over the next five year period. And the figures, uh, the tax based figures, based on those given to us by South Gloucestershire when we set the last budget, they've been reduced by 5%. Um, we might, I don't know how realistic that is at the moment. So, Moving forward for next year's budget, that's going to be the biggie that determines how much sort of money we're, we're actually going to get on the future. Excuse me. So, um, continuing on page seven, so it's now looking ahead. This is the precursor to setting the budget. Um, so, as I said, the, the tax base, um, if that moves a lot, if it's a lot lower than uh, we're projecting, then obviously that impacts our budget and we're not going to know until early December um, or early January possibly. I don't think any information will be coming out from South Gloucestershire early um, in, in view of what's going they on. Are, what? <coughs> Hello? They are, a, they are aiming to give um, an indicative figure hopefully by the end of November. Okay. 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 This is the difficult thing. Nobody knows how, you know, how, how this is going to um, evolve. So we don't know how long our income is going to be sort of uh, reducible uh, from the site, especially. But also with the tax base, um, employment levels are affected, which directly affects us, um, you know, for um, applying our future. Um, so the current income budgets within the forward plan for next year um, from the uh, from the site are still at 136,000. We might have to slash those um, and and assume that you know that the sites aren't fully open. Um, we're going to have to be really careful how how this sort of next budget is set. Um, which you can't assume that you're going to be able to operate at a level. 
So they weren't going forward. What we've learned when we listen to the one box is much more interesting. You can buy the cams by you. I mean, but this is just highlighted. I have, I have got an option linked to this. So, um, <coughs> so uh, uh, yeah, council may need to work within a worst case scenario um, and reduce um, the income from site by 50% to take a protective stance when setting the budget for next year and then anything else, you know, if things do improve, then it's a bonus. Um, but section we have, we have reduced the, we have reduced income budgets already, haven't we, Rachel? But for, for this year. Yeah. Rachel, this is what we're looking year. at next year. Yeah, yeah. 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 what Tony just said there, and this is almost on, on the front page that we've got that got that reduction. Yeah. So Rachel was saying that that reduction effectively could continue potentially. We might have to do have a look at doing the slashing next year's income as well, yeah. Okay. Mm. But just to, to, uh, luckily the bulk of our income is from the precepts um, and we do get some from investments as well but um, in that respect and because we have got good reserves and compared to a lot of other town and parish councils we are in a really really strong position but you know we, we don't need to assume that you know our income levels are going to be high um, I'm just saying at the moment, the unfortunate thing is that we're setting budgets in November, December, Jan. Um, we don't know which way the, the virus is going to go. It might not be until late spring, but a, a vaccine comes in that might change everything. It might, we don't know what we're dealing with. So all I'm saying is on those grounds, um, I would, I'd be tempted or, uh, to slash the the budgets for the income from the sites, just similar to what we have this year, um, and that that will allow some movement if the tax base is uh, reduced as well, so that we get less precept. So basically, it's all round. If if the uh, council um, wanted to sort of play play it safe and you know assume really low income for the year for next year. Uh, Rachel, if you're basing, you're looking at doing less income to what we've done this year. No, or, matching it, matching it. Are you looking at, okay, you're anticipating that we're likely doing the same next year as what we've done this year? We don't, that nobody knows. I'm, all I'm saying I is, I mean... I agree, we don't have a crystal ball. No. Dark somewhere, you know. Um, yeah. But I'm saying, I'm, the figure. So I'm losing you. We're looking at is it based on what we've done this year? Are the figures based on what we've done? I I haven't created the figures yet, so but I probably would suggest that we do um for the income from the sites figures similar to what we have in the budget at the moment for the current year. Yes. Well, that was a yes then. <laughs> After all of that. Yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not hearing very well. Okay, I think um, what? Okay. I, I think we're going to face the income figures on the figures that we have done this year. Yes. That I probably would, yeah, but it, it's council's decision. That's why I'm throwing this out here. I'm just saying this is what I would suggest. But at the, at the end of the day, it's council's decision. Where you know, setting budget. I'm just highlighting that it might be better okay. to slash next year again. Yeah. Sorry, let me make the questions slightly different. Are you going to reduce? the income from what we've done from this year to next year? On that? Or are you going to keep it as... It will be the same next year. 
if I was writing a budget that I was approving, I would put in the same budget levels as this year for next year. For income. For income from the activity centres. Well, it's your decision. If you want me to, I will. we're kind of trying to commit ourselves to in what we're going to quotes for, what we're looking at to buy. As you rightly flagged to us, I would even say, I don't know if you agree, Tony, but I think some of these paragraphs you speak to over this evening in terms of decisions we've made to go away and look at things that cost more than what we've got available to spend, because I find it quite worrying that the RFO would even say to us, we've got the same plan we have two to look into, with the backdrop of we've just gone through a load of activity that is kind of optional. It's not going to cause critical issue or problem if it was not progressed. Uh, no, no, if you if you think if you read on in my report, do you put that contingent reserve is directly linked to expenditures or income losses because of COVID. It is not the wish list capital project. No, no, so I, what I would rather do, personally, is I would rather see those capital projects be reduced or postponed okay. to stop even the contingency fund being used to um, adjust for lost income and other loss against COVID, etc. Mm -hmm. um, personally. Just makes you wonder. Go on, Terry. I, I was just going to say, it just makes you wonder what, what's not there for then if we, if we can never use it, really. I just wonder, I mean, this is like a, an out-of-body experience, this particular pandemic, isn't it? So it's kind of not, hopefully, because God never happens again, but it's just really, really out of the ordinary situation, isn't it? So, I think I agree um, with what you said. Um, in, in my view, in my personal view, um, we've always been really financially buoyant and really financially looked after. So we have been in a situation where you can make those trade-offs between things. I mean, I see the reserve as a situation where you can't make a trade-off anymore. And um, whereas I think we've got things actively in the contracts that we looked at to kind of trade. So I think we've got a trade space, um, which we're really lucky for because the financial management accounts for many years has been really good. 
Um, and I just think that the reserve elements, yes, ordinarily for other councils who probably haven't been well looked after, might be dipping into reserves, etc. But I think for us, we've got trade spells in our, our capital projects, in some other examples on the compacts we've got. There are realisation, there is realisation of saving probably elsewhere, I think, personally, after listening to how we could reduce capital expenditure. On your report, Richard, I'd like to go through a few things which I believe that we could save some money. But what we've actually only lost in real terms, somewhere in the region, about seven and a half thousand pounds from the pandemic. So it's not as a big black picture as what it necessarily be out to be. However, <laughs> however, if I'm going to However, I can understand what where Ben's coming from, that we shouldn't necessarily use our reserve. What I'd like to come into is a couple of questions from the report. First of all, you said that before we can get a government loan, we need to have a loan agreement. Where are you going to get that from? It's from the people that I got that response from. So it is from the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government. So, it's that, 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 that is the legal procedure. So, for a town and parish council, before they, they can't just go out and get it alone, you have to get permission to go and get the loan. Yeah, okay. That has to meet certain criteria. So, that's why okay. I went to now. Okay. We need to start somewhere. So, okay, then, then well, I think we need to possibly look at the um, the, the room on the flying, but okay, let me move on. Um, you mentioned about a variable replacement, and I'll go back to the team on that bit, um, of uh, £13,000. No, 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 I, we've got reserves of £13,000. Yeah, okay, yeah. If I um, but yeah. Please let me finish, Rachel. Sorry. Right. Um, have you thought, and I know you've got them here, um, depending on whether you hear of it, British Outlaws or on lease. I don't know if you have thought about PCP, which is a facility where you have a brand new vehicle, of which it's effectively a lease, of which you either have for a year, two years, three years, and you will technically only pay what the depreciation of that vehicle over that period. It's a new way of effectively financing new cars or new vehicles. Um, and it's quite a, um, a, a good way of financing things. Um, all, all you do pay um, is, a, is the depreciation. However, if you, for example, damage that vehicle, and when it goes back, it gets inspected, and it will be very stuck. For example, if you curve your wheel, if it's an Allen wheel, then there's a chuck. Um, if you if you broke the front of her, then there's a chuck. So you have to really look after the vehicle. You need you also have to service it with the regular intervals. But it is a way of not having to look at spending 15 grand. So I, I don't actually get involved with it. I'm just highlighting what um, the, um, um, I've been highlighted to me that there's a possible expense there. So no, that, that's, that's very valid. All I'm saying is that if that does come up, there is 13,000 in reserve. You know, but it, it's the same position at the end of the day. If we made the PCP, then we could possibly utilise that budget somewhere. Yeah. Or we reduce it. Yeah. If that, that well, I was going for it, but save the money. Um, I don't want to touch too much at this moment if I'm on the clean contract, but I, I have gone round to other sites, and this possibly could be for uh, a meeting in full council. And the standard of cleaning, to be quite frank, is a peak of um, uh, And certain questions I've asked are going quite very strange. 
I would have now to extend the contract now for probably 20 years. One question I'd like to ask is, um, which I asked when this contract was changed, who buys the cleaning products? And I can see from our fellow our uh, your monthly thing that um, we're paying for some of the consumables. Now, my question is, who buys the cleaning products? Before I was out, um, I jumped on this quite substantially and they pay for their own products for the cleaning of the site. The additional cleaning products are what we need to bring in for our hires, so like sort of hand gels and things like that. I couldn't tell you, I haven't been back long enough to go into that in detail, but within the contract, their, their cleaning materials within that contract they should be covering. So are we paying for the cleaning product as part of the contract or are they? No, it should, well, how the contract used to be, the, and all cleaning contracts I would have accepted, um, should include their cleaning materials. Now that's how it was before I was out. I couldn't answer that now because I didn't have that information, but I would have thought that they, they'd be paying, paying for their own feeling materials, so we'd have to pass that on to... It's something that needs to be checked. Yeah. But the next question is, where do we buy our consumable stock? I, I, I don't know. I, it's, Tony, it's purely because I haven't been that long enough to, to go into those details. Mm -hmm. You mean like that you say about the Manel's one on the um the the chewables are your toilet paper, soap, um uh, thin liners, hand towels. Yeah, but so we know. get it through Manel's through the cleaning company. Why don't we buy it through the cleaning company when we should be buying it through a wholesaler? Yeah. You'd save money. I couldn't no, I don't it. Exactly. And this is a ridiculous scenario that we're buying the material from a cleaning company from the traffic. Can, can I just say, pre previously in the past, what we did do, we um, went out and checked uh, prices um, from, um, yeah, sort of from bulk buying and from sort of other suppliers, compared it with the price that the cleaning company put the buyer at. That was in the, in the past. And we went for the cheapest option. Absolutely, I'm sorry, then you're going to the wrong supplies. These cleaning contractors are buying them from a wholesaler. And then they're using them. Right? And then they're putting up a markup on for selling them back to you. We need to go directly to people like wholesalers, cleaning, cleaning products, they're all wholesalers. It's a pie, we could. I don't mind getting prices from it for all for you. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, anything that saves money, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna save money. 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 Yeah, it's gonna in stock tanks on the cleaning product. Oh, you sorry, the consumer. I don't think anybody here. Secondly, we, 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 do, we do an annual one. Uh, despite, I, I mean, I can't answer, I can't answer this question directly because that's outside of finance. No. But gen generally, we, used, we did used to have um, a continual stock check <laughs> in May. Sort of. Yeah, well, uh, and I finalised one for all the, at the end of the year, but yeah, continually at the end of each week. Side by side, but all the cleaning covers I look in, there's not one cost charge. I, I think that's outside of my area. Yeah, I think that's over it, but uh, it's something that needs to be addressed. I don't know why they're doing that thing. I don't know why they're doing that thing. I think we need to put on the agenda 
คงสู่การสู่ซึ่งความเป็นอันดับเดียวสุด Yes, I think that a fraud we've obviously looked, got to find ways to try and save money where we can, provided we don't turn down the standards. So, yeah, currently the standards are below the floor. Could we even come to slightly more commercial with you and say, well, the money conference has got to have a lot of your money? Well, I personally feel like we've got more. So, is that where? And, and there's something else which I think we ought to also think of. Every single channel that comes in is a bonus, and it's open only in the presence of a cancer. And that I think will solve the problem. Yeah, I think the proposal possibly needs to come. Yeah, and that would need to change to financial rights. Financial rights would find the law being standardised as well. For what single cancer? Well, apparently, yeah. Well, yeah. Because obviously, well, okay. So, so we say, are we saying a base of commercial review with a looking at uh, financial regs and standing orders and just doing a few different things? Yeah. So when it's full count, it's full count. You don't do it. No, I don't think it's realistic to get that. Well, any decision on financial regs and standing orders would have to go to full council. Yeah, that's fine. I'm just thinking of yeah. like um, actually the time to collate all the information together for full council. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But if Tony wants to do full council in November, what well, the shared council would say. But, so you want a full review of everything in the next two weeks? Well, I think what we practice. That's not, yeah, that's. I, I think probably yeah. a holding report on the government. Let's start off with um, uh, ambient landscaping and the field contract. So could we, could we have that, just those two then, for full council, with the additional note that we want to do in that review of all these contracts with a procedural uh, look as well? With procedural change. And we can have the report for that for finance mm -hmm. in, in December, and then it can go to the full council meeting in January for ratification. If it needs any amending support. So and then we get all that up and we'll the next financial year. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then you can yeah. address it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I think it's still a nonsense to give three of one year. You think you're saving money or not? You just give them a little check book the next year and year after. That's my personal opinion. I think we should work a tender every single year. 
Mm-hmm. Which have exit board and there's contraction. Mm-hmm. And then you can go on every year, you'll danger that uh, people are not going to give you the best price because they're they are having your online short term. I disagree, my mom's based on it. Mm-hmm. There's people out there screaming for that. Whether they're the right people is the question. Well, mm-hmm. you know, it's more than that, not right people. The part of the work from what we've got. Okay, can we, oh, can we? Hang on, so the review of current contracts is the four pounds of November, and then what was, <laughs> and then December finance. So the review of those, the, the, the cleaning contract, yeah, and so the uh, land estate maintenance contract, the highway well, the highway verge. All, all of that covers in one. Because you've got the roundabouts and all that. Well, no, the round, there's no contract for the roundabouts because that's finished now. Okay, so all, 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 all of that. The menial space contract one bucket, isn't it? And then you've got the cleaning stuff for review, part A, full council, and that kind of have a bit of report on that. And then finance have more of a full financial review against all contracts. Preliminary report. There's one other one, which is the keys, all the insight, Oh, well, that's the core security. Yeah, they have their key holders for our sites. So if, if the alarm goes off in the middle of the night, they come out to that. Okay, and now I've got to go, so is it worth just saying just for now that two immediate concerns are addressed next month, and there's a more a, a broader report for December, and then there's a, a further elaboration of what we And just if we feel that they can't go through the three different contracts, then we need to come up with Well, it's like mm-hmm. not the two weeks of the Four weeks today, but then the stuff has to go out a week before, so that's three weeks today. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, what does that, what does that, any other council think? I don't want to be the only one that says that it needs to be done in this time frame. Um, anybody else got any comment? I think we're getting right. If rushing it makes it uh, hard for the officers to do it, I don't think that's a good thing. I mean, it's been dragging on like this delivery. For months, if not years, uh, so one more month is not going to make that much difference. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I don't think the proposal in this theory challenge is no, yeah, really. yeah. I'm not going to say anything else. Sir. I think the time frame I've said is adequate to give the time needed to properly review it, um, unless anybody else wants to chip in. Say anything, I think we should just move on from that moment. I think that's okay. So, is there any final comments, Rachel, for the item we were discussing? Uh, no, I mean, this is the, the, the pre postal for, for the budget. I mean, I'm sort of led by council. Um, so, generally, I uh, what we've done in the past are our send um for the through to the chair of finance and the chair of council to comment ahead of them of, of you know sort of meeting and things. Um because, I mean especially if you know with all these comments uh, and everything going on uh, you know sort of our I need more direction. So if I'm in contact um, with Ben Tony um, and take direction from the two of you initially, the budget class. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On the on the um, hiring, we've actually had hires in back in the We've had some hires then. Well, but I, I love to come yeah. you know, the preschool, after school, provincial, all that, all the difficult. Yeah, um, if you have a look at the... And the support of the gym. Um, love donation.
emotion of being in actually serious so like, I'm not thinking we have got some of them and the gout I think was starting back uh, more recently um, bowls couldn't come back in but I think the big kits sort of came back in so we have had hires in it's not that we haven't had any income and on page one of the, the report we can see on there the um, the actual income from each of the sites um, that we have got, I mean, Bailey Court in particular it is pretty good. Um, we might have to issue some refunds for uh, places that, you know, uh, or for houses that have cancelled. I mean, parties can go ahead, and especially when we get the, you know, sort of maximum number of six people attending, that impacts sort of hiring and things like that. So. It, it, it's an ongoing changing situation. We are getting income in. We're not turning away hours, but um, you know, some just cannot go ahead. Yeah, there's a few, aren't there? There's quite yeah. a few. Yeah. None, none are being turned away at all. Some have asked not to um, go ahead because. Uh, for sort of various reasons, but um, we, we've not told people that they can't cancel. One question which might be just off the wall. Um, we've got the Jubilee Centre and we've got Bailey Sport and we've got um, Good Way. Um, we've got another club which is on the Can you tell me what? We've got a what? Sorry? We've got a hub. We've got a hub. Okay. I do finance. I, 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 I can't tell you. I, I'm, I'm guessing it, it's because I, I, I don't know. I'm guessing because of social distancing, and then I, I don't know. Graham does go out there, and actually, he was saying a couple of weeks ago that hopefully he's going to be starting to do some more things in the container over there. Yeah, opening it up. So, who's the that centre? I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, these are all, all this is open, I can't understand all that shit. We've spent money on putting the computer in there, extra uh, um, CCTV, um, doing an extra container there, and yet it's shut. We don't receive any income. No, we don't receive any income. No, we don't. And the brain does open the container if he's over there. Um, was he, was, he was over there, he called in there Monday evening and Tuesday evening this week. Because actually we thought some people sort of tend to be trying not to lose their mind like, they're like, oh, hello. Okay. I, I don't know, I mean, he's so safe working from home, he's so safe working from that room out there, and then he's got a fully operational cabin, in two cabins, and it's not been in. Okay, Rachel, is there any, anything further to be said on 8.1? No. <laughs> anything further to be said on 8.1? No, no, right. no. I mean, what, what I do want to do in the table, that is, it, it, it's just testing sort of the, the template before we do go into setting budgets, just, just to sort of highlight different areas, just, just for consideration um, ahead of time. Many thanks, Mr. Gate, and we'll be doing that to speak. Eight point two is our petty cash statement. Yeah. Uh, uh, Terry did these uh, with Mickey in my department, so, so it looks fairly standard. So hopefully Sharon and I will do it for this month or anything. There was one item on there which was two products uh, on the loop. 
Oh, in, in the main, in the box, is actually cash account. Yeah, I thought the thing is what the clean thing. Tell me what that was for. Well, yeah. Probably, uh, so that um, the very clean materials was probably things like um, washing up liquid and that sort of thing. I think. Stuff outside of the cleaning. Yeah, there. nothing to do with actually cleaning. Actually, for us, our, our own. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we, we do, I mean, we do have to sort of think between hours and things, um, because when one finishes, then, and that, that goes with the contract. That's why there's like the sanitizing sprays and the um, hand sanitizers and sprays, which were bought in September. Do we understand the sanitizing stuff as all the COVID? Yeah, there is. They support cleaning yeah. materials, £9.45. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I mean, we, we do have some cleaning sort of costs for each of us, like with Auntie, I mean, like Sharon said, um, washing up liquids and, you know, because you do, we do have hours in using cups and things like that, um, and we do have to sort of clean after certain hours we've been in and sort of sweeping the floors so we've got pin liners and um, things like that. So, that, so there are small, there, there are people, but the main one should fall to the cleaning company. So we're looking for a proposal of a snatch fence. Yes, please. Would anybody like to propose a snatch fence? Yeah. Might all propose that. Would anyone like to second them? Anybody like to second a snatch fence? It's free to you to second petty cash statements. I will second petty cash statements. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favour? We've got Fab, we've got John, we've got me, we've got Mike, we've got Tony, we've got Terry. That's unanimous. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. I would make a second, I'll just sign and then you can sign for our please. That's absolutely fine. Thank you. Okay, so I have eight point three is the C C L A. Uh, uh, this is the uh, link to the CPLA local authority uh, property fund investment that we have. Uh, council's got 60,000 invested. Um, it is included in our investment policy and um, it, um, it, it, it initially um, it was just to let you know that uh, uh, dealings had been suspended because it is a property fund, so dealings were suspended between March, but at uh, the end of September, um, it, it, uh, the dealings restarted. Um, a lot of the property funds apparently um, were closed uh, for the period of, um, uh, just, just to protect sort of the investors temporarily. Um, uh, because they thought the property fund would be sort of quite volatile, but um, it's just to let council know that that did happen, that dealing has restarted, and it starts on the 30th of um, September. Um, this um, deal once a month at the end of each month. Uh, but also linked to this, um, the, um, the SBA looked at um, putting a uh, notice period in for people that wanted to sell within property funds uh, and they were looking um, up to sort of 180 days later um, for uh, notification of sales. This is new 
Um, CCLA have introduced a 90 day notice period for any redemption from their sort of property funds. So, really, it's just to let sort of council know ahead that um, you know, we, we can't just decide a couple of weeks before the end of the month, right, we're going to get rid of this. Um, we are going to have to do it a month ahead um, before sort of being actually go through. So, we won't necessarily. Um, we, we won't have an up-to-date sort of point, but um, that is one of the joys of uh, being in a, a property fund, I suppose. Uh, but what it does, it, it's, it's more realistic, so that um, if a large number of investors did want to get rid of their investment, it gives the fund time to sell the property, because, you know, obviously property you can't sell overnight. So, um, but they brought in... Um, uh, 90 days of notice period, so um, sorry, so we are going to have to, it's the three month notice uh, that we're going to have to do ahead if, if, if and when the time comes that helps to decide they don't want this investment anymore. Um, at the same time, um, within our investment policy, um, we invested in uh, November 2018 and council saw this as a long-term investment, knowing that um, there'd be a lot initially, um, and that's why um, the limit of six, uh, a £60,000 investment um, was capped, and we weren't going to go above that, um, in return to get um, a, a, a fairly good, well, a very good yield, historically. Um, over the last year, we've had um, an average of 39 Five percent, um, sort of uh, since July of last year, going uh, sorry since October last year, through to July of this year. Um, so at the moment, the investment still um, complies with our investment policy. So um, it, obviously, it's up to council. And there will be sort of these coming in in November, but at the moment everything complies with our investment policy so I wouldn't see a change it would be the wrong time to get rid of such, a, uh, such an investment at this particular time so really this, this is just sort of notification of the new situation regarding this investment no action on that other than to no, it, 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 it's just to receive it and um, you know sort of, um, I mean I'm recommending sort of no change and I'd probably be um, suggesting that at the, at the November investment with you um, you know uh, because we, we tend to have a look at the investment but I did last um, not last year the year before with, with you then um, if you remember when we catch this at 60,000 with your investment. Um, so, um, it, it, you know, sort of the market is a bit prepared, but having said that, the, um, I have um, attached a lot of market research and market reports that people were interested. Um, on the second page, it does show the graph of um, uh, the stability of, of the commercial property market at the moment. So, I, I, you know, sort of, um, I, I'm not recommending sort of any change at the current time, and I probably won't next month. But uh, you know, it's a council decision at the end of the day. In which case, you need to know that it's mine to go into the period now. Any questions, from really, or happy just to receive that? Thank you, Mr. Okay, we will move on to. Thank you, Rachel. We'll move on to item 8 and 4, the system and the euro, 2021, 2022, funding request. Um, they've sent their um, funding request in for next year. I mean, probably 15 to 5 is more important now than ever for our local community. Um, and just for those councils that don't know, um, they cut, it's a Wednesday, isn't it, they've come, Sharon? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm still on catch-up for a lot of stuff at the moment. 
Um, they come on a Wednesday. Um, they're in sort of huge demand, and they will only see Bradley State residents when they come on Wednesday to our site, uh, utilising our funding. Um, everybody has to give their case code, and anybody outside of Bradley State, they will redirect uh, to see them um, on another day at another site. So um, their funding goes completely on local residents, and it is, I mean, historically, I can't imagine um, that anything's changed. I don't know, if are they still running at the moment, Sharon? They, no, they haven't run at all through lockdown, um, but they have a dedicated line, local contact line, which Bradley Stoke residents can use, which isn't the, the generic main citizen's advice. It's a local one that's open Monday to Friday, I think it is. Um, and that's publicised on our website and on our notice boards. They could act. They did say that they could actually have looked at coming back here, but because they couldn't open all of their remote sites at the same time, because there was a problem with the Yate one, I think it was, um, they didn't want to open here because they thought they'd be swamped with people trying to come here who weren't Bradley Stoke people. So. That's why they haven't actually done face-to-face -face meetings. But yeah, there is the, the, a local contact number. So they yeah, are still providing a, a service to Bradley Stoke residents. Thank you. Sorry. 15,220. 15,220. The current funding uh, is 14,922. So this is equivalent to a 1.98 to the 2% increase. The forward plan has a 3% increase built into it. So it's well within the predicted budget. It has to be uh, wanted to, um, to, to configure it. Sorry, what was the percentage increase, did you say? Uh, I think they said 1.98. Um, it, it sounds about 2%, it's a 2% increase. Okay. It's an increase of £298. Does anybody propose spending the £15,220 on citizens' advice? Proposed by Bart. Oh, Seconded by Michael. Um, Michael, do you want to take that one? I will give them 1500 15, 15, So they didn't charge us anything? No, sorry, let me get to speak later. Didn't we used to pay 300 now a year? Not, no. Not, not in years. No, I, I mean, <coughs> I could go back. We, the citizens advice and the chief funding, um, because yes, they fall within the same sector. Um, Sorry, just come back to me. Um, it's all on three, it only depends on three of the families. Oh, okay. Uh, um, uh, you have me worried then. Yeah, uh, it, it just come back to me. I, but, I, can't, I can't remember sort of going uh, back. Yeah, right. I, I can remember going back that um, uh, when council was considering sort of for the six terms of life, it was because there was a lot of demand but where people kept coming into um, our sites asking, you know, if, if there was any six terms of life to the Bradley Stoke. It has run for a number of years. Um, they uh, 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 attached, I, I, I don't know if, if you've had a look at it, they, they do a full report that is specific to um, the usage uh, in Bradley Stoke and... Yeah, yeah we have 52 meetings a year and then my child is 15 around. They, they do, I mean, they do have the word help, uh, you know, sort of in, in, in addition, I mean, sort of they attend the site, but they then carry on with work outside of those meetings as well. Judge, how is it different? Um, could I just point out something that I've noticed that Bradley Stoke residents are not 
how far out of 1500 this world in time. But don't, don't get me wrong here, citizen boys do a fantastic work. And they're absolutely right for saying that during this COVID period, they're being in demand a lot more. But I think it would be useful just to check what other local authorities around, i.e., and how to put an ad pattern to pay. But I think we're possibly paying quite a bit more. Have you any figures to back that up, Jane? Yeah, almonds are pretty big, bigger than many of Almond of our size. And, and almonds for almond will be a donation to citizens advice. Yeah. By this money that we pay, we get a dedicated service once a week here for only the Great Stoke residents, as opposed to having to people go. Why don't you just ask two other places where they do go, which is happening for them. And find out what they charge. Well, hang on a minute. We've got a proposal from that, and we've got seconded seconded by by mine. Mine. So I'm going to take a vote on that one first. If it fails, then uh, we will go through to just look at what you'd like to propose. Now. So, do we have in favour paying the 15? What do who's voting in favour for paying? Is that the one we Yes, it is. Yeah, because yeah. you've got the proposal and the second Yeah. So. All those in favour for continuing with citizens' advice as documented in front of you, raise your hands. So we've got Fab, Mike, and me. Mm -hmm. All those against? Tony. Abstentions? John? Terry? Yes. Yes. So proposal carried. Thank you. Okay, so item 8.5. But Tony, at of interest, I will just, where did you say that they go? Oh, yeah. um, okay, I will just ask the question. That of interest. Item 8.5 is the dedicated police, police officer funding request for 21 to 23. And we've got that table. Mm -hmm. So they're looking for £16,156, um, uh, and this spends £11 per week for the 22 hour per week contract for a dedicated police officer within Bradley State. Um, this has been going, uh, this spending has been going on since the mid of 2009. Um, and although originally it was at, uh, 25 hours per week, it was reduced from 2011. And you've got the full history in, in front of you. Um, so this equates to a 2.12% increase or £335. Uh, the full return again has projected a 3% increase. So again, this uh, request is within, six, um, within the predicted budget of council. Did want to see that. Any comments on this? Well, I think the lowest point of the entire process should be the same. Any comments on councils on the scene? No. No, thank you. Is that a proposal? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a second proposal? Go on, it's a proposal. Okay, I couldn't hear you, Jamie. It's, it's, the, it's um, to ratify this um, piece of officer funding. As I said, we, we have the lowest primary attack cost. Yeah. So you're not happy with the 16,000? Yeah, I think that we should be in the piece of that. Yes, I'll second that. Yeah. All those in favour? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. So 8.6 is continuation of the existing... Oh, Hit me bows. Hit me bows. Thank you, uh, uh, currently, with the picture release, but at the time it was uh, really, really uh, 
um, good, good sometimes the uh, an eight pence supporter. Um, I um, spoke to them a few weeks ago and um, they're offering a 50 day uh, notice rolling contract, £7.75 plus that supporter, based on the same terms as we've currently got, which uh, means that uh, downloads um, that you have to go into the banking machine that normally costs about uh, £200 a year, we get for free, and it's just that we pay for our and composted charges in addition. So um, I did speak to Sharon, and um, uh, especially sort of with the current situation, um, you're using the banking machine more where you're posting things out, aren't you? All the, well, all the council papers and everything go out, yes. Yeah. 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 Y
it did highlight that we might need to put something in future releases for so situations like this for the future. So um, after sort of uh, discussing the matter, bearing in mind that our, you know, sort of, even though they might not necessarily be able to attend, um, our running costs continue. Um, and it's a dedicated um, area generally, so we can't even offer it to other hirers at those times in case they want to attend because that's built into the lease. So um, it, it's whether sort of council wants to consider um, introducing a minimum charge of 25% of the annual lease. Um, and then any, if any of the hires do actually attend for more than 25% of the time, then uh, we would monitor that and actually uh, calculate the, um, the, the lease proportionate to usage for that period. It was just an idea that we came up with, um, um, you know, sort of, I've highlighted possible wording that can go into, into the lease uh, for each, each uh, group. I would say the radio um, at Britway kept going all the way through. They weren't necessarily on site, but their equipment was there and kept running because they could uh, come in remotely and program it remotely at times, although if they did need to attend, uh, they've got their own entrance and it's completely stand alone. Um, and their lease is um, £850 at the moment. So they have paid it and I would say that um, theirs continues uh, no matter what, um, sort of even during you know, sort of periods of site closures because they fall out the side of the normal um, workings of the other sort of lease holders. Uh, but the um, the scouts were, uh, weren't able to use it all the time. But um, I think they just started to be using it as well. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I gather they're hoping to return back after half term. That's sort of the plan. But obviously, um, nothing's gone through bookings yet, so it's all up in the air. Yeah, yeah. So, so they 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 might well come back. Um, the cricket club um, used to for quite a lot throughout, um, uh, uh, throughout the year, but uh, from what I can gather, the bowls club didn't because probably due to the age group, um, you know, a, a, a lot of them would have been in full lockdown or children. So um, the, the groups have asked us, you know, sort of um, what can happen sort of during these periods. Um, so. You know, but after we sort of uh, discussed the matter, this is what we came up with as a, as a possible alternative for, for council to consider. That's it. <laughs> so it's whether you want to, so the 25% would be a standing charge, whether the site's open or not, whether you attend or not. Uh, this is for everyone other than the radio. The radio would keep paying their full money. So the, the scouts, radio and bowls, they'd pay, just pay uh, one quarter or the first sort of uh, payment from the lease. They pay quarterly. Um, and then if their usage is more than 25%, then we would actually charge them proportionate for the actual usage based on the agreed lease. Yeah, so we've got leases at the moment yeah. that have had, uh, have had to be available in terms of site availability because people have got leases against their groups and facilities. They haven't been able to use them and we haven't necessarily been paid for the non-use of those rooms, even though we've had to help them hold them in reserve because they're on a lease. Yeah, but we also had a period where the uh, sites were actually closed, so nobody could produce them during those periods as well. In fact, that's really built into the existing contracts with the lease. Yes. Like, if they can't use these facilities, they don't pay. No, no. There's nothing in there because we've never had this before. In this position? <laughs> no, but this is brand new. That, that's why this is highlighted. So this is one option because they've asked the question, you know, rather than 
just playing it. They want to know, you know, what the situation actually is. Why don't we say, oh, mm -hmm. because we've got a contract with them. Just because they have their use it, not really our problem. Even if we close the, the well, the site, um, I think the difference here is that we had to close the site on a government director. We've never yeah. had that before. There's no wording anywhere on the lease linked to that. It, it's something that is brand new. So, you know, I, I mean, it, 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 it's fine, but whichever way, way it goes. But, um, yeah. It might be wise to put some form of wording for such a situation in the lease. Uh, just take one for example, the radio. Right, they can apply for a grant. I don't go any for ourselves and say cross the ship. No, the, the radio wouldn't be reduced. There's been discretionary grants available for all these organisations, but it's like cross the ship. Oh, fine. So, I mean, this has just come up because the yeah, people are... Not really our issue, I sure. I think, I think it's really difficult, isn't it? Because it's, um, yeah. you know, it's way, way outside anyone's control that these sites have to be closed down. So, it's a really difficult... Because you can see both sides, can't you? You can see from their point of view that they can't use it, then should they pay? But then equally, you could say that about insurance, couldn't you? You know, so it, it's just very, very difficult. But it, the one thing that is a given is that, you know, the reason that, the, that they can't use the site is because of the government directive. That's, that's the difference here, yeah. Yeah, exactly right, yeah, yeah. The great Terry, but as I was trying to explain, they have had the opportunity to apply for discretionary grants through South Africa. And have they done that, do you know, Rachel? Uh, I have no idea. No idea. No. 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 Well, it's John, and they've asked the uh, various organisations whether they have applied discretionary grants. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. What have they achieved? That's the point, Mike. You know, if they have the flight, that's their fault. Can they fill it up? No, I think that's out. all closed now. It, it, it is closed now, yeah. But it was advertised um, quite widely on social media, through our, our site, through their site. So it's, it's, an, it's, an, it's an organisation as well as this is. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See, in my mind, saying to society, I'm trying to express the grant for the people that were necessarily in business that could apply for the discretionary fund. The web to the block. So what, in my mind, what I'm trying to balance is setting aside all the grants and whatever people can only get from organisations to help them over a period. And if I was running a local shop and I had to pay rent for somebody to own my shop and run a business out of the space, I've still got to pay rent on the building if I want access to the building. Yeah. So in my, I'm trying to balance in my mind whether I even would like to have they pay a 25 percent discretionary rate, or whether it's as it's as clear cut as you're renting the space, you want the space, you pay for the privilege of reserving that space. I think the other thing to bear in mind is that if we actually come down too heavily and these organisations fail, this probably is still going to be a worse place without mm -hmm. end months time. I think considering some of them get funding from us as well, in, in general, in terms of grants, mm -hmm. we're, we're paying, mm -hmm. we're investing, we're investing money in them, they reinvest money in council, room hires and rates some of them. So I do, there is a bit of a circle to, to some of them. I'm just, I'm just a bit nervous about saying it's, occurs in the future, then we're going to they essentially limit our own income potential to 25 percent in terms of the lease. And also, where does it end then, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, so when it's, if the weather's dreadful or something and they've not been able to use it, you know, do they then call that? 
that, that's different, that's covered within the lease because, um, yeah, due to weather, that there's no difference unless we choose to close it, um, sort of out, outside on the, the hard courts, for example. Uh, if we choose to close it, um, then we, we tend to offer a, an alternative. But um, the main thing about this, it, it's not to offer a refund, it's to have something in the lease for this event. Now, if it's a case that no matter what happens, you know, sort of the, the lease remains payable, let's put that in the lease. Isn't isn't the isn't the lease built in that way? No, not for government closures because we've never had it before. You know, the site is not closed by us. It, it's closed by the government. But by virtue of the fact that it's not that, that there's no um, reference to it in the lease means that in all cases they still have to pay for the lease. I don't know, that's what I'm, I'm sort of yeah, no, I'm sure. about it with you. Yeah. Purely because they've asked the question, they've asked it. Yeah, of course, that's why. The question that I've asked it, which mm. is why it has well, asked the same question. Sorry? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. All five have asked the same question. No, some of them have, but, but be, because they're all leaseholders, you have to treat everybody equally. So it's only the it's the stouts and cricket and bowls, isn't not, it? Sorry, not, not the radio. Not radio, because they're a different different entity. Then. But I would put some words in. Would I would still put some words in their lease that you know it remains payable. Um, would it work if we said um, we want a detailed impact statement, um, you know, financial impact statement? Because, you know, the point that Michael was making, if, if anyone, um, because of this, um, has, you know, is then brought into financial difficulties, it wouldn't be the greatest optics if we kind of, you know, pressed them and ended up causing, a, you know, business to go out of, yeah, I know, I know. I mean, perhaps it is because it's so um, exactly. I don't know. Well, oh, hang on, can we just. We just spoke. We just spoke on the the lease end of it because I mean the scouts have paid in full their full annual charge. No, the uh, not the storage part on that right, page, and then if you turn over by the room lease, so really what you're concentrating on is the the three on the backs of the scouts, the cricket, and all three. Of them. So the cricket club is basically a waiting direction on the office. Bowls Club is doing the same, waiting direction. But the Bowls Club have paid, they've kept paying. The Cricket Club have asked the question, and I think the Scouts have as well. And the Cricket and Scouts have only paid, are paid. I mean, it, it is the truth, the leases are very, very heavily subsidised already. Uh, yeah, I, and that's why I'm very, very nervous about the same and saying just, just pay 25% during a period of yeah. government direction. But it's just a suggestion, it, you know, it, 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 to get the conversation going. So in my mind, I would much rather this was kind of worded along the lines of it always remains payable um, when, you know, if you can't, if we've been directed to close or whatever because of the... Um, because of their government directive, but then if we're instructed as a local authority or a council or whatever by the government, by the community, communities and local government, the secretary of state, communities and local government, if we're then directed by them to turn around and say you, you waiver all your lease charges for you know community groups and things like that, then kick it up to government. It's they it's their lockdown. They impose the position on us and follow their directive. If they haven't. Apply for a local authority to strip and say, Are you entitled to do 
they are done. I'm sorry, it's, it's not very awful that we should turn around and give 24% off. When well, Rachel rightly said, we, we have any uh, subsidized number. Can't we just say that we'll review it the next time anything like this happens again? Well, I think it's about making, make, uh, actually receiving charges and hours. Yeah, it's knowing what to do now because potentially, I guess, if we went into a higher lockdown or things changed, we could have to shut all our sites again. And then, like the scouts who were thinking of coming back, the cricket club and the bowls have finished for the season, so they're not going to be impacted for the rest of this year, but the scouts potentially are. So I, I think, um, so Terry, correct me if I'm wrong, you were saying about uh, the, the rigour around these existing leases, are they not rigorous enough to the point that we'd expect them to still be paid if people aren't using those signs? Because I, I mean, I'm thinking if the lease is rigorous, and the lease is there, and the lease is a binding document they've got to pay money against, then the lease stands and you should pay, pay as, as, under, as under current lease. So unless, unless that isn't clear in the lease is, I'm kind of struggling to see what the point is. So that's me or Terry. Uh, well, I think Terry raised the question around the rigour of the lease. Uh, leases and at least being there anyway, so it's all to be paid. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm very much in opinion of the same opinion of. So unless these leases are written in a way that they do not work in our favour and they're not advantageous to be receiving money uh, in times of periods of gone through, I, d I don't understand why the lease is a, a point of challenge where someone can turn around and withhold the payment or ask the question and not pay. No, I, I, no, I, I don't think payments have been withheld. I think it's just where in lockdown and things like that, they have not got to their finances. So, you know, sort of different people haven't got together to sort of authorise the payment. I think that's all it is. But I, I don't, you know, they're not standing there sort of banners in that. I don't think it's a lifestyle. I'm still with. No, the previous one was finished there. They had their membership, they paid all their membership, you know, and, and we were saying, well, let's give them another 25 years off, give them COVID. So they had plenty of opportunities to get a government grant. Say, you know, we're going to 
direct you to waive all your lease charges, then let the government do that, so be it. But that's, mm. I think this is a position way above our heads and we should just continue, continue to manage our financial situation and our state, which is these leases need to be paid or we find someone else to occupy the space. Yeah. And as Tony said, you know, they have the, they have the um, potential of um, claiming grants and things, and if, if, if they haven't, unfortunately, that doesn't really then flop over into being our problem, does it? The radio company could also apply to the 2% learning as well. We're not reducing the radio, though, so regular out there. The radio came. Yeah, they've they, they, they done it for yeah. the people. So you propose, haven't you, uh, yeah. Tony? Yeah. So you've yeah. the lease but still is a legal point. Yeah, so the lease should be paid regardless. It would be nice to have a crystal ball and see if you get us Oh, yeah. 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 So, um, for people, so, um, um, sorry to the clerk, so, uh, and I think it's kind of what Sarah uh, Tony said, that, you know, that they can get grants and this, that and the other, so, um, Well, that, I mean, the bowls could come to the town council for grant funding if they wanted to, if they were in dire straits with having paid and as could the scouts as well, the, 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 the cricket club there, you know, they can by the grant funding through us, apart from whatever else they can get from anyone else. Yeah. Right, do you have a second if uh, the team's proposal? Yeah, I'll, I'll say thing that. So we'll invite the Terry. Yeah. All those in favour? Mm -hmm. I am, I'm just trying to do my little. <laughs> right, so that's Three in favour then. Against? Abstentions? That's two abstentions. John, are you there? So John's no longer in the meeting, so we can't really say what way John voted. Should I give him a quick ring? No. Um, well, it's, it's carried anyway, Terry, so... Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. Right, so let's do... Right, that was 8.8. 8.9 8. is the ongoing summer training, 8.9.1 is the adoption of undertaking to the repay costs and courage of property supports and of staff need the SDC. I believe this is related to mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Well. Unless we need to talk for it. No, it's, it's just to say that obviously when we took on one of the our newest member of the finance team, the idea was that, that she would then be trained up to be able to support Rachel. Unfortunately, due to circumstances beyond anybody's control, that actually didn't happen because she spent some, a lot of time learning the booking system and then she was just about to start really working closely with Rachel and then fortunately Rachel was no longer with us for a while and so... Well, we had to, we had to arrange for her to do her stage courses. Yeah, she's done her stage courses and she's just come at the end of the course the final stage course. But then to be able to actually go on to sort of looking at accountancy and bookkeeping and um, which it was eight point two, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well it's it's, it's at the point moment point. it's an overview of what what it is behind. So because the course is so expensive, it does make sense to have an undertaking which we've never had before for it. So this could be for anybody who would want to do a you know a significant course. Okay. So this 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 yeah so this this it's document is the one that South Coast Council used for their training so it's three months. Is it your yeah, it's, 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 it's
question that isn't over the time and why we have. So, um, yes, yeah, three months they pay in full and then. Okay, Mike's the page that I've sat in there. All those in favour? Oh, it looks like that's unanimous. Terry? 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 Sorry, sorry, I had um, an urgent call. Uh, um, an urgent um, comfort call. Are you in favour, though? Oh, I'm really sorry. I think that, can you just give me a quick rundown of the uh, The 8.9.1 is the adoption of policy that basically, um, when a uh, staff in the SDC undertake training, there is a mechanism that they need given a certain okay. period of time that's to be costs from them. And we're following South Cross, which is uh, what they they're doing. doing things. Right, okay, fine. Okay, that's the answer. Extremely aware of John's gone. So, yeah. Well, that's the answer to the answer, isn't it? Which was kept from what we need to do. Yeah. Uh, 8.9.2 is the proposed council break portion of the finance. Okay, the group we've talked about in the. Um, so, this. Yeah. Remember, this is the finance team that's the top of um, and then is keen to go on and do an accounting level bookkeeping in sort of course, um, which will put her in an even better position to be able to support Rachel. And so I'm happy to propose that. Is the AAT accountancy training course? Well, I've never mentioned there any cost here. Yes, down at the bottom. Right at the very bottom. Oh, sorry, I was looking at just a little bit, yeah. No, yeah, so that's the cost of the course. That's why, as I say, we wanted this undertaking because it's quite expensive. Right, it was all one document, but again, it was just being in two parts. Oh, sorry. All headline, underlined, isn't it? Yes, there is, you're right. That wasn't, the, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Anyone to a second? So, sorry, I think. I'm to say that one. Yeah. Seconded by Fab, but those are things that can screen. Yeah. All those in favour? Terry? Yeah, it's okay. I've got, I've got it now. Yeah. Cool. Uh, just so you know, I, one of the budget increases um, accounted for that, so that's already been included in the forward plan. Thank you, Rachel. 8.10 is quotes for being reserved in Harcourt's Jubilee Centre. So we're going to down there. Yeah. Going back to Jubilee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm trying to find my report here. Apologies, I've kind of moved back in the office and uh, yeah. you have I did send out the updated report to everybody and for people who are actually here, um, it is tabled a hard copy of it. Person that out earlier on because we got the extra voting. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this sort of came about from the netball um, clubs actually complaining that the surface was um, very slippery. Um, I obviously came in February and didn't know sort of what maintenance program was already in place. Apparently, the um, heart surface areas haven't been done since about 2015. Um, and they are in pretty poor condition at the moment. Um, they do need some work done quite quickly. Uh, I haven't managed to get total resurfacing, well, apart from the very bottom one, um, cost, which is what something, well, something I was trying to get in before this meeting, um, but unfortunately circumstances I wasn't able to. So what I have here is what was quoted from each company. The top one highlights um, preparation, um, to include two pickleball uh, lines as well, the markings for pickleball courts, which is something that Sharon pointed out that we needed to get, it would be a good idea to get. Um, so apologies, it's quite a short report for me. Uh, does, one question, Wayne, if we move ahead in the way as suggested, does the soft surface quote come down because we've already had the version um, from courts or? Sorry, didn't understand that much. Yeah, I, th I think it, it probably would do. Yeah, Michael saying, so the, the soft surface company quote is to 
to essentially clean it and do the basic and then cover it, isn't it? So if you're, yeah. you're saying that if we've already had some work done previously, exactly then so. presumably the work to actually resurface in the end would be cheaper than the 10,000. Uh, but yeah, I would have thought so. I mean, I can't obviously guarantee that. I'm not that company. Um, yeah. It would be logical. Yeah. Would it though? Would it really be logical? Because if, if you just cleaned the surface and then you're relaying the surface, why would cleaning it prior to that make any difference? Because it's can be penetrated in the second one. Yeah, to resurface would mean removal, I would imagine, of some of the surface so they would take the top surface off and then they resurface and then remark out um, the actual top surface. I don't think cleaning would come into it. I think they would, like I said, remove the top surface and then do preparation mm. for a resurface. Mm. That's what I think as well. Yeah, so it might actually not reduce that cost then. Yeah. Um, No, you, you've got that, uh, the extra report is tabled. It was on your, on your table, the, the quote is there. Would that actually suffice? No. 
No, that's just cleaning and preparation of moth killing of the actual site. That wasn't to include um, relining, remarking the um, the areas. And that would actually deal with the complaint, wouldn't it? As you said in your report, that that would be that you know we could do that, and then later look at the you know the, the clarity of the markings and all that sort of thing. I think that's what I yeah, mean. I mean, I have. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. I was, I was always initially just to say that, but I think that's what you said in your report. That, and I agree with that. And I think that's what we should do. I think we should just clean it. As long as that addresses the issue, you know, the issue at hand, um, and um, then when we're in a bit more of a sort of stable situation, um, you know, financially and, you know, environmentally, then I think um, we should just consider it again. Is that value though, the top quote is five and a half? For resurfacing the market of tennis courts and gives you pickleball courts. Rachel? Just um, just so that um, members know, in our reserve we have got eight and a half thousand reserved specifically for the court resurfacing because we knew it would come up since the last time. So there is that money there. We have also got some um, some money in the Jubilee Centre for our maintenance, but uh, that reserve is specifically there for the court to surfacing, but it, it is eight and a half thousand. So I wasn't sure if that top thirty was for resurfacing as well. I mean, just in mind that the, the, I get why we get second quote the cheap phone kind of just deals with complaint. But I'm looking at like what's what we get. Yeah. For two thousand two hundred at least five thousand five hundred. And it's like to me it looks like five thousand five hundred we're getting far more yeah. brown money yeah. than we're getting we're just spending two just under two and a half. You basically mm -hmm. halfway that more that's more that old resurface three court. Resurfacing the three court new marking and giving us the pickleball court marking, so deals with the pickleball court issue, or yeah. well, not issue, but you know, the request from that pickleball Yeah, to have the yeah, two courts marked. It seems like we're killing like not only two birds at once, mm -hmm. so like three, maybe four. Well, and especially that I just, just mentioned about the fact that that's already earmarked anyway. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've just also looked <coughs> at the ground maintenance budget. We have at the moment got 13,000 left. Um, we have got, I, I know that we have ended the season after the football, um, you know, sort of repairs and what have you that tend to take place in, sort of, um, or they used to uh, order them through in March at year end. But so there is money there as well. I personally would like to propose we go with the first quote. Thousand five hundred fifty nine six eight, and do the resurfacing as it comes in under allocated reserve for it. I'll second that. Do we need to do all three? If we're looking at them on the surface, on on the. Well, I think when the netball play, they use all three courts, don't they? So it would be difficult for us to just do we're two really now. All three courts. We cannot. We cannot put them on the surface in the third court. Well, I mean, the mother is is dependent on getting external grant funding anyway, so it's yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's going to be a way off, isn't it? So yeah, yeah. I've got a proposal, got a second there. So, do we vote in favour of what we propose, which is going for, or I propose to take five thousand five hundred nine? So, the GB for time yeah. measure. So Terry's in favour, Mike's in favour, I'm in favour, John's in favour, so is Fab, and uh, against, abstentions, right, so all the unanimous on that one. Thank you very much. So, Sharon, that's number code 3086. I was going to ask you what that one was. <laughs> yeah, 3086, thank you. 3086.
Yeah. 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 Okay, I'd say that the H.11, which is the free of bills and loans or payment, and it's been updated. Yes, it was updated, so you've got an updated one on the table. It was just that the um, HMRC PAYE figure was incorrect. It's actually, instead of 6576.61, it was 6298.40, so then that takes the um, salaries total down to 33.465. Mm -hmm. As the president, mm -hmm. do you mind? Are there any of the payments, mm -hmm. uh, front payments, do I need to do that? Mr. Are any of these payments mm -hmm. up front payments to any contractor? Not what I know of. Up front payments? Yes. yes. But paying them before they do the job. I, I very much doubt it. Um, yeah, the only one I think would be is the BS1 Fire and Security, the All Sites Annual Security Shuttle. We pay for the year then, and then that's done. We don't pay any more during the year. Well, what we do do in April and March, and then like that, they look for the contract that comes to work for the bank. What was that for? You know exactly what it was for. There was a contractor that was paid in the region of funding on those that came in March or April. The contractor didn't want to bust them. They couldn't walk the contractor to the side. Walk the actual. Was it really illegible? Is it a practice that we've been doing, or is it, that was just a one-off? Oh, A1, is it? So that's the annual charges for the site maintenance that we pay. It's is that that one? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you've never been up front. They could go across the next one. I think it's a practice that we should stop. But a monthly payment. We shouldn't be paying contractors up front. We shouldn't even talk about paying the payment up front. Well, they could go bust the next day. Well, I think we've already agreed in the SAC Council section to look at contracts and things going forward in other meetings. So, to approve the bills and libraries before us on the table, does anyone have any questions about what's okay. tabled? Sadly, as a council, as a councillor, I feel we would have been hidden into agreeing that because we've agreed it. Anyway, perhaps it's something we should discuss at the next board meeting. Perhaps we've got it on the agenda. Well, is that going to go in with the review of the. Um... I just thought that had been reviewed, but I just thought that had been reviewed. Yeah. yeah. Or the, the contract. I'm just going to say, it is a really good point though, because I think, you know, where else do you get a situation where people get paid before they actually do the work? Normally, they do the work, then invoice. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. But that's not the end of the so... I was just making a comment to... to yeah, no, no, I, mean, I agree, I, I agree, Tabby, I'm just trying to be quite a bit And I mean, agree. as far as I'm, well, these things, and Rachel will agree, the ones that, that have been paid annually, have been paid annually for years, mm -hmm. haven't they? And, uh, but, now I can't, yeah, now you say it, uh, but the councils have nobody said it before, and we've just ignored them and gone on and done the same. No, no. It's a, 
Because it's quite, I mean, there is stuff that we do pay monthly for. I mean, like the, the community festival is, is spread over the whole year. Yeah. And the cleaning yeah. is done monthly, isn't it? Quite a few of them are monthly. Yeah. For what? No, he gets paid monthly. Yeah, but he's doing before he does the job. Yeah, but he's, he starts working in the September, so he gets paid in September through to the July, because we've had our first planning meeting, so then he goes on. We'll get a report from him on a monthly basis, what we've actually put it to what we're actually getting for. Yeah, but he's actually You could get a work break in like that. I mean, that's not unusual in public finance to have those things provided as evidence against this voice. Mm -hmm. Anyway, just conscious of what's on the agenda. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Hopeful that we've covered all those points this evening. What we have from some full council subsequent finance meetings as reports say. The other one is that we have a good tool of each to do in full council. proposals for the monthly expenditure. Do you like to propose the monthly expenditure plan? I'll propose the monthly expenditure plan. Well, I'll show them. Who would like to vote in favour of the monthly expenditure plan? Terry? Yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll squish my screen down, so let me just go and get the... Back away, back to the <laughs> No, no, no! <laughs> oh, I'll squish it down, we'll see the agenda. Right, now, is to confirm the meeting, the next meeting is Wednesday the 16th of December 2020. And uh, thank you all for turning up this evening. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you, Chair. Bye. Bye.